Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair and today we're checking out a pretty rare and interesting guitar. This is a Parker P9EN acoustic electric guitar. Let's check it out. All right, so a little Parker history. So Parker guitars were started in 1993 by a luthier called uh, Ken Parker. And he made some pretty wild designs. And uh, the most popular of which was probably the, the Mojo Fly. So here's a look at the Mojo Fly. Basically, it was made out of really light woods, reinforced with like a carbon fiber exoskeleton. And uh, they played great, and they were super light. And a lot of people really, really liked them. Um, they sold to U.S. Music Corporation in 2003. And then those sold to Jam Industries in 2009. And then they were defunct as of 2016. Uh, so they no longer make the Parkers, but uh, they have somewhat of a cult following and uh, some of the older models um, like the flies and stuff command pretty high prices on the used market and uh, I've played a couple Parkers myself and they were fantastic. So Parker also did a couple lesser known acoustic models. So these are pretty rare, they're pretty hard to find. And they uh, command quite high prices as well. And uh, this is one of them. This one's called the Parker P9EN, Acoustic Electric Guitar. So it's pretty wild looking. It's got a really unique shape. And a couple other uh, very unique features that we're going to talk about here. So yeah, this is the Parker Event Series. And it's got a lot of super high-end features on this guitar. It's got a solid cedar top. It's got uh, an ebony bridge with uh, a compensated bone saddle. It's got ebony bridge pins. I think these are aftermarket. These are ebony with uh, abalone inlay on the top, but uh, works nicely with the ebony bridge. It's got solid rosewood back and sides not uh, not laminated and it's got uh, abalone stripe down the back it's got abalone in the rosette um, it has a fishman magnetic pickup right here by the sound hole it also has a matrix infinity pickup underneath the saddle and you can blend those two to come out in your sound when you're plugged in it's got a rosewood binding around the solid cedar top it's got a nice dark ebony fingerboard it's super shiny it's uh it's not lacquered though it's just a really nice piece of ebony and then we've got our rosewood headstock um it's just like a veneer over top like gibson does there's our parker branding on the top there kind of a unique headstock and it's got a mahogany neck. It's got controls here. So it's got a bass control. So this is the volume control. Then you got bass and treble controls on the bottom there. And then this control here blends between the magnetic pickup and the uh, Fishman Infinity pickup in the back. So you can get a lot of cool tones out of there. And yeah, there's a look at the back. Just a really nice piece of rosewood and it's got a multi-piece neck that's mahogany it's uh mahogany maple mahogany maple mahogany so a nice sturdy neck and then we've got some high-end grover open back golden tuners there and uh yeah just a really unique very good looking guitar it also has a zero fret nut 
a zero fret here. So what a zero fret is, is that uh, the strings actually rest against the fret here instead of the nut. Uh, so the fret actually acts as your nut. And the advantage to this is, is that uh, it's always going to be perfectly cut with really nice low action because uh, the manufacturer put this right where it needs to be in terms of playability. Uh, your nut is basically just there to hold the strings. But uh, yeah, you can get very nice action with zero frets. So, and it comes in this super nice case with the, uh, with the shroud. And uh, this one had a little bit of work done to it but everything looks pretty solid on it, but we'll have a closer look at that stuff on the bench when we get some specs. So let's go ahead and do that. So here it is on the bench. So yeah, I bought this guitar used and the previous owner let me know that there had been some work done to it. So um, you can see that there are a few cracks on the top here and these have been sealed with like a lacquer and I did have a look at the mirror when I bought it, after I bought it on the inside and these have been cleated. So. It's been professionally repaired on the cracks here. So I think there's one or two or three here by the sound hole and then one over here by the bridge in the back lower bout. And it's got dings and scrapes and little marks here and there on the body. The back and the sides look pretty good. And our frets are super nice, super shiny, super polished. And our ebony fingerboard is super dark and uh, shiny. It feels very, very smooth. And there's a look at our bone nut with the zero fret nut. And a look at the Parker on the headstock. So just a very unique guitar. I don't think anything else has the same shape. Uh, it's got the cutaway there. And it just looks really cool. The sound hole is a little smaller than normal and the normal guitars. It's kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how it sounds. I, I did plug it in briefly once, but I didn't get a really good chance to uh, dial it in. So we're going to be doing that today. Also, I was having a look at the bridge and uh, yeah, it's not lifting at all, but there's a little bit of like remnants of glue around the sides. Um, I'm wondering if maybe a bridge Reset has been done on this thing at some point. Well, if so, it's it's super, super clean. You can barely tell anything's been done. So, uh, yeah, if it has been done, it looks like it was really well done. And let's just have a quick look at the back here. Yeah, just wow. A really nice piece of rosewood for the back. And it's solid, solid wood. And you've got that really nice abalone running down the center seam and yeah the back and sides are all solid wood too and just yeah nice piece of wood I just need to uh, give this a quick polish before we do our playing demo and here's a look at our strap button in the back and this is our electronics plug-in spot you've got XLR output which is nice or a quarter inch, and there's our battery compartment there, which is a, a nine volt battery. And then, yeah, again, our controls are on the, mounted to the body, we've got a volume, and then we've got uh, treble and bass controls here in the bottom. And this is a blend between this magnetic pickup at the top, and then there's an under saddle uh, Fishman matrix underneath the saddle there too. So you can kind of combine the two. What's interesting about that is you could almost, you could plug this into an electric guitar amp if you were going to go and just use the magnetic pickup. That would be possible without a lot of feedback. Uh, and then if you were using an acoustic amp, you could go all the way to the under saddle pickup. Um, so yeah, a lot of options there. And uh, blending the two might actually have some really cool sounds as well. So I'm excited to plug it in. So weighing in at a very light, four pounds, 11.3 ounces. With that, the nut is a 1.7. And at the 12th fret, a 2.07. Neck depth at the first fret is a point at 875. 
And we'll take it from the 11th fret because the 12th fret's turning into the heel there. And that's reading a, nine, a 0.9215. And here's a look at our neck profile. So it's a pretty standard C-shaped neck. Um, a little flatter than some, but uh, still basically a, a pretty standard C. And as far as feel goes, uh, yeah, it feels not too chunky. It feels very similar to like a, a Gibson, maybe a 60s style neck, maybe a little thicker. But uh, yeah, it feels good. All right, here's a look at our headstock. You can see that uh, it's kind of uh, carved in there at the top with the Parker logo, which is kind of cool. And then we've got our rosewood veneer along with our golden Grover open back machine heads uh, that work nicely. And there's a look at our bone nut. It's a little bit of a chip here out of the bone, but uh, it doesn't affect anything. The string still f sits in there pretty nicely. And there's our zero fret right there. And then a look at our really nice, dark, polished ebony fingerboard that feels really smooth like glass. And our frets are nice and shiny and polished. This guitar plays really great with uh, really nice action. And then there's a look at our magnetic Fishman pickup, which is mounted right here to the end of the fingerboard with some screws. Uh, loosening those screws, you can pop the whole thing out um, which you sort of need to do if you want to adjust the truss rod. Uh, I've got a little kind of a U-bent truss rod that I, I was able to access in the back here, but this pickup is kind of in the way of that. And uh, see if I can get a good look at our cracks here. So yes, yeah, so there's, there's some cracks in the top that have been cleated uh, on the inside and filled and then drop filled over top like lacquer filled, so they're covered. So that's kind of important so no more um, moisture can get in those cracks and open them up further and the cleating on the inside prevents them from opening them up or spreading as well. Cracks on older acoustics are pretty common and um, it's pretty easy to fix them with cleats. Once they're fixed uh, it doesn't really affect anything other than cosmetically. Um, they should never open up again and it doesn't affect the sound once they're cleated and closed but uh, you are going to see them cosmetically so some people are turned off by that me, when I buy an old acoustic and it's got a few cracks, it doesn't really bug me because uh, it happens quite a lot. And there's another crack here. And some chipping around the edge. And just a couple dings and scrapes and throughout. It's an older guitar, 2006, I believe. And uh, it looks like it was used quite a lot. But pretty honest wear and nothing that affects playability or how it sounds yeah very nice looking guitar that uh, this abalone really pops looks like it's glowing almost and there is uh, abalone micro dots on the ebony fingerboard as well which look nice and the ebony board itself is quite thick so it's a nice big thick piece of ebony and then on the back, it's in really nice shape. There's not, uh, there's no dings or big scrapes or anything or chips on the back at all. It's in really good condition on the back. Really nice piece of uh, rosewood, nice and streaky. And a really nice abalone stripe running down the center seam. And our rosewood binding throughout back and top and sides and nice piece of rosewood on the sides too look there's a little bit of a mark there I should be able to uh, polish that out yeah it's it's coming right off as I scratch it so that's not an issue and then yeah our heel joint is nice and stable no cracks or separation there at all so that all looks good and here's a look at our five piece neck with uh, mahogany and maple and then we've got a nice volute here too uh, the volute just protects this area with a little bit of a thicker wood which is a nice feature and then here's a look at our Grover open back 
golden machine heads. These are nice tuners. They're pretty expensive, um, but they do keep tuned very nicely, and they look pretty classy. All right, let's get out the endoscope and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, having a look in the sound hole here. So there's our badge. Shows our serial number and our model number, and those are the origin of materials badge. Um, we can see our bracing. Uh, there's the back. There's a look at our rosewood, all solid rosewood back and sides. Oh, we can see some of the bracing there on the top, and it's scalloped, which is a, a nice feature. You only see usually see the scallop bracing on higher end guitars, which I guess this is. You can see uh, it's very nice on the inside, no glue squeeze out anywhere. It looks like it was well done. There's a look at our pickup, magnetic pickup. Right behind there was the truss cavity. And there's a look at our serial stamped on the heel as well. And those are our electronics over by our volume and blend and uh, EQ on the body there. And in the back, that's our output jack um, controls there. And we've got our cable management tied up there. I'm just going to go in and see if I can get a better look at the bracing. Um, there's a look at our cleats. So, I'm trying to get a better look at the cleats in that area there. And there we go. Um, you can see one there. And just trying to get a better angle on the other ones. There they are. So yeah, there's our cleats, one, two, three, four, five, there, covering the cracks. Um, and there should be one more in the back as well. A better look at our scallop bracing in the back. There's our bridge plate. And there's that one cleat there. And yeah, everything looks nice and clean inside and as expected. Managed to get quite a nice setup on this guitar. So, using my notch straight edge, you can see that there's very little space between the straight edge and the fingerboard. So that means the truss rod's set nice and tight and the neck is nice and straight with only a little bit of relief. And here at the third fret, you can see when I use the third fret, you can see that the fret's resting very nicely against that zero fret. So that means the neck is set nice and straight, and the zero fret is uh, where it should be. And then here in the 12th fret, you can see that our action on the low E on the 12th fret is very low, almost like electric guitar action so it's just over 1.5 millimeters and at the high E it's just above 1.25 millimeters so you can't get quite as low as the action on an acoustic obviously because the strings are quite a bit thicker but this uh, is very low for an acoustic guitar all right I'm going to run through the fingerboard just to make sure there's no buzzing or fretting out anywhere I like to speed this part up but if you want to hear it in real time just slow the player down to 25 percent So yeah, nice low action and uh, no fretting out or buzzing anywhere. And our frets are just super polished and shiny. You can see them just gleam in the light there. And it just makes it really easy to bend and play. And uh, that ebony fingerboard feels smooth like glass too. So very nice to play. All right, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. All right, so I just want to see how this thing sounds acoustically. I'm using an Audio-Technica P48 condenser microphone with phantom power. And uh, I'm just going to try to capture what this thing sounds like acoustically here. So let's go ahead and do that.
All right, for an amp, I'm using a Marshall AS100D acoustic guitar amp, which is a very nice acoustic amp. Um, I'm going to use it with a, just a little bit of reverb, and I'm going to be miking it with a Shure SM57 here. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and see how it sounds. All right, I'm plugged into the Marshall, and uh, I'm just going to quickly go through the electronics from each pickup and just mess around with the EQ a little bit and see what uh, sounds we can get. All right, I'm gonna start off with the Matrix under saddle pickup. So the blend will be all the way towards this pickup. And then I'm gonna mess with the EQ a little bit and play around a little bit. And then I'll switch all the way to the Magnetic pickup. Uh, and then I'll play around with like somewhere in the middle just to hear all the different uh, tone capabilities. Okay, now I'm going to swat, switch it over to this pickup here, the magnetic pickup, which I do by just uh, turning this dial counterclockwise. <laughs> I'm just going to get a good bass setting here. Alright, now I'm going to blend it right in the middle between the undersaddle pickup and uh, the magnetic pickup 
and just see what that sounds like, playing the same riffs. <laughs> Alright, final thoughts on the Parker P9EN Event Series Acoustic. Um, yeah, wow, what a really great guitar. It's, it's super cool. Like, it looks like nothing else. Um, very unique. And it just feels super premium, super high-end. And uh, yeah, everything about it is super well made and gorgeous looking and it plays and sounds great like um, this is a really cool pickup system uh, you have a lot of versatility between the under saddle pickup and the magnetic pickup and the fact that you can blend them both um, just really gives you a lot of tonal opportunities there uh, it sounded great acoustically um, too so it does both really really well and the playability is outstanding. It's got super nice low action with a really nice glossy ebony fingerboard. Uh, the frets are really nicely done on this guitar as well. And uh, it just resonates really well. It's got excellent sustain and uh, sounds great in a room or plugged in. Uh, combined with all that versatility from the electronics. There's not a lot of bad things to say about this guitar. It's, it's awesome. It has had a little bit of work done. Again, there was some cleats in there for the cracks and they have been sealed. And uh, it looks like there may have been a bridge repair at some point, um, but it's pretty seamless. You can't see any signs of it really. Just a little bit of extra glue around the edges. Just a really nice solid cedar top, uh, solid rosewood back and sides, really nice binding, gorgeous abalone throughout. And just a super nice looking, classy guitar. Uh, you'll definitely stand out on stage with something like this too, because it doesn't, it looks pretty uh, different than most. So yeah, very cool guitar. I'm very happy I got to uh, try one out and see what it's all about. Because these are quite rare, they're hard to find. And uh, yeah, I'd be very tempted to keep this in my collection forever, but I've just got way too many high-end acoustics right now, so. Um, if you're interested in this one, I'm going to have it up for sale on the Reverb page, and uh, yeah, if you take it, I think you're going to be pretty lucky. This is a great guitar. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and I'm going to have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.